Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The City of Kansas City, Missouri partnered with the Marlboro Community Coalition for a neighborhood cleanup event March 28th. More than 100 volunteers, including a group of city workers, spent their Saturday morning picking up trash and collecting over 650 tires that had been illegally dumped. The city is developing the next phase of neighborhood investment connected to sewer and wastewater improvements that are part of the overflow control project. The next phase will include more green infrastructure and the city will leverage that investment by bringing in other departments and programs to revitalize the entire neighborhood. The Public Risk Management Association recognized the city's Play It Safe While Driving campaign with a 2014 first place award. The city's corporate safety office created the campaign to increase awareness of the dangers of using a cell phone while driving and to encourage city employees to take a pledge to drive cell phone free. June was National Safety Month and we wanted to team up with the safety teams from the Aviation and Water Services Department to make a city-wide safety initiative and we selected distracted driving, specifically using a cell phone while you're driving to be our focus and that's where we came up with a program to play safe while driving campaign. And really it's just about changing a habit. That's all they need to do is change a habit from reaching for that cell phone to putting it away so that they don't use it while they're driving. Uh, we show groups of people videos from injury accidents that have happened and stories from people that have been involved in uh, injury accidents where there was a cell phone in use. Um, after they watch that, after we have that class, we ask people if they'd like to sign a pledge that would essentially promises that I'm going to do my best not to use my cell phone or text anymore while I'm driving. Um, in addition to signing the pledge, uh, we, have, uh, we provide an opportunity for people to dedicate their pledge to someone, a family member, a friend. Uh, and then after that, what we do is we give them, we give them a place to put their phone and that is a little zippered orange bag. It has the logo that says play it safe while driving on it. And what we like people to do is when they get in their car, they can make a call if they want to, but then before they start their drive, go ahead, take their cell phone, put it in the bag, and zip the bag up. And when you zip the bag up, that's your reminder that you're done with that activity. You can set that on the seat. And you know that the phone is put away. I'm not gonna use it. I've already made the decision. I've zipped it up in the bag. I'm gonna drive safe. I'm going to play it safe while driving. To date, more than 1,000 city employees have voluntarily made a pledge to drive cell phone and text free and have dedicated that pledge to a loved one. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities here to tell you about the upcoming spring events taking place at your Kansas City facilities. On April 14th, more than 1,000 area students will converge on Bartle Hall for the iBuild Showcase, an annual event which brings students together for an opportunity to actively connect with industry professionals. This program demonstrates the wide array of careers that are connected to the construction industry, such as skilled craftsmen, architects, engineers, marketing consultants, accountants, construction managers, and more. Go to nice-kc.com for more information. The third day Soul on Fire tour with special guest Ellie Holcomb performs at the Music Hall on April 16th. Third Day is the recipient of four Grammys, 24 Dove Awards, and 30 number one radio singles with over 3 million albums sold. Purchase tickets online at Ticketmaster.com or at the Municipal Auditorium box office. Need to see a doctor but can't afford the cost? On Saturday, April 18th, the National Association of Free and Charitable Clinics, together with the Kansas City Care Clinic, will be holding a one-day free medical clinic event for those in the area who have limited access to health care. While a walk-in will be seen on a limited first-come, first-served basis, patients are encouraged to call ahead and make an appointment for this clinic event. Call 800-340-1301 to schedule an appointment. Eat, drink, and feed many at the premier Kansas City food and wine tasting event. 
Works and Quirks 2015 will be held April 23rd in the Grand Ballroom of the Kansas City Convention Center from 6 to 9 p.m. Now in its 19th year, Harvester's Forks and Quirks is an exciting evening featuring gourmet food and wine from more than 50 of Kansas City's finest restaurants and beverage purveyors. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City Convention and Entertainment, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. I'm Channel 2's Chris Hernandez. Kansas City Mayor Sly James delivered his 2015 State of the City Address here at Starlight Theater. He highlighted initiatives from his first term and he also thanked the work of council members, commission members and city employees who are working with residents each and every day to make Kansas City a better city. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Starlight Theater. Please turn your attention to the stage as appointed and elected city officials enter. And as we start this, I might ask you to please silence your cell phones as well. And members of the city council, from the first district, in district council member Dick Davis and at large council member Scott Wagner. And now, Proclaimed by Newsweek as one of America's five most innovative mayors, please welcome your mayor, Sly James. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Well, good morning and welcome to Starlight Theater. Uh, four years ago, we dumped the tradition of a post-election gala with tuxes and gowns and champagne and had a picnic instead with fried chicken, beer, and the blues right here at Starlight. It just didn't seem right that we would have a gala when workers' salaries were frozen, the city's confidence was in the dumps, and we had nowhere to go but up. So it's fitting to come back here today because in my mind, this is where it all started. Starlight to me represents a change in the direction of not only what we do, but how we do it a change in attitude focused on building a city for the next 50 years. I hope you know that I've given you my best each and every day, and when I leave home to go out to serve the city that I love, I do the best job that I can. And I hope you know that I'll continue to do that until my days as your mayor are over. I'm very proud to be mayor of a city that's clearly reinventing itself. Fly over country no more. Kansas City is the center of the American Renaissance. We are the city that cities now look to for ideas on how to fight crime, how to get kids reading a grade level at third grade, how to innovate governmental processes, how to grow the economy in the right ways. Now last fall, the Royals became America's team. So I wrote an open letter to the country embracing their enthusiasm, but also touting our charm, our edginess, and our unique amenities. I had never been so proud of this city. That pride didn't center on baseball, it centered on Kansas City, finally taking its rightful place on center stage in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the state of our city is full of opportunity. I assure you I'll continue to seize each and every one with your help and support. So you can stand up now and be proud because Kansas City has arrived. We aren't going anywhere but further to the top. Thank you very much. The mayor also pointed out new efforts by the city to support the arts and the creative economy. We have reopened the film and media office as well as creating the Office of Culture and Creative Services. For Channel 2, I'm Chris Hernandez.
my name is Misty Phipps. I'm one of the directors of the Brush Creek Drill Team or Brush Creek Royal Diamonds Drill Team. We are a newer team here at the center. However, we are a combination of two already established teams, which was the Kansas City Marching Ravens, who Vernon Washington was the director of, and the Kansas City Marching Gemini, who I was the director of. We merged our teams together to make a great dynamic new team called the Brush Creek Royal Diamonds. I really like how fun it is, you know, like you don't really get to experience a lot of stuff that you do as with the drill team. Like we were just in the parade. I ain't never been in the parade before. My first parade was with the drill team. It was really fun, you know. It wasn't really too much pressure. It was just basically just having fun. It really teaches you how to like pay attention and how to like learn how to listen because like if you don't listen your whole team will go down. You have to be able to like participate and keep your anger in check. It really like teaches you a lot of things. Hello, my name is Monet Phipps. I'm one of the head captains. I can't. Okay. That's okay. Over. Hello, my name is Monet Phipps. I'm one of the head captains of the Brush Creek Royal Diamonds. I have to keep my team in control. Like when the directors ain't there, I'm there to make sure my team, if they need help, I'm there to help them. I learned leadership, um, endurance from um, when you do performance, you have to keep moving. So I know I built up my endurance, um, how to perform in front of big crowds, that kind of stuff. We've done several performances this year, but our most notable one is the performance, the parade we just did on St. Patrick's Day, where our team took third place in the drill team division. We're super excited about that, with us being a newer team, um, for us to be able to bring home a third place win was awesome. The kids did a great job, and we're just looking to move forward and up from here. could possibly be one of our city contract employees. Uh, this is Solange and we've been talking to John Gordon with Boys Grow about possibly using goats to clear out some of our vacant, vacant grounds, especially those that are really overgrown um, that we just can't get to with the number of mows that we do. As you guys know, everybody knows we spent about a hundred, oh, excuse me, $1.4 million mowing vacant lots, and that's still not getting it. So we need to do something that's a little bit innovative. Kansas City is a home of innovation, and uh, why not goats? They use them in a lot of different cities, New Orleans, some in Florida, and I just learned not too long ago that we, they use them at the Louvre in Paris. So we just, we need to be able to take a lug off of the general fund. And if this is something that's going to help, we're gonna do whatever we can to make it happen. Uh, John is doing some pilot projects and uh, he'll come back with uh, some information for us so we will know how much it will cost and hopefully how much we can save uh, the city. So at Boys Grow, we teach education and entrepreneurism. And one thing, um, one key to entrepreneurism, you find a problem that exists and you see if you can't find the solution. So through talking, uh, talking with some of the city officials, they mentioned some of the problems with the overgrown lots and some of the uh, need for some alternative measures as far as taking care of those lots. So we kicked around with the boys and you know, it's, it's, it's not gonna happen overnight, but we had the idea of potentially using our goats as the new lawnmowers, as the new pesticides, where we can go through and actually unleash our goats and let them clear some of the land in a more organic, sustainable way. Yeah, so right now we have four dairy goats and uh, it's, you need a different kind of breed to actually do the clearing. So we're gonna get a couple of boar goats. We'll probably get a half dozen or so. And our, our hope is this year just to get a small plot and, and try it on a small level and kind of see what that looks like. And then maybe in 2016, bump it up to where on a, on a bigger level. But for 2015, just kind of take it, take it one step at a time, see how it works, and then, and then take it from there. America's leading nonprofit developer for affordable spaces for artists and creative workers invites you to a town hall meeting. 
Art Space Projects will conduct a needs assessment and will collect community input. The town hall meeting is Wednesday, April 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Kansas City Public Library Plaza Branch. Resident feedback will be used to help assess needs specific to Kansas City's arts community in terms of space and amenities, affordability, and location. ArtSpace will deliver a feasibility assessment which will be used by city leaders to propose next steps. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. To view this program again or other Channel 2 video productions, just go to our YouTube channel. It's at youtube.com slash kcmocco. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.